This video is going to show how we can measure code metrics in order to improve software quality. If we want to ensure that the software is good quality, then we have to have some way of being able to, to measure it. After all, we can't control what we can't measure. So the question is, how can we actually measure software quality? Well, one of the ways we can do this is to measure metrics on the code. And probably the, the simplest metric is simply to go and count how many lines of code are there. Alternatively, we might want to count how many functions do we have or how many globals. Another metric is to calculate the fan in, fan out. Well, what's fan in, fan out? Well, let's take a look at an example. Here I have a, a simple function and I can see it's only called from this function. So the fan in is one. This function calls all these functions here. And so in this case, the fan out is nine. Alternatively, we could count how many nested loops do we have? We could count the number of comments. We could calculate the ratio of comments to lines of code. Try to understand, well, is the code got enough? Has it got enough comments? Is it documented enough? Back in the 1970s, there were a number of metrics that were measured, like the Halstead metrics, knots, and also linear code sequence and jumps. These all gave an idea of the complexity of the code. But for understanding the complexity, probably the best metric to use is the McCabe cyclomatic complexity. Let's take a, a look at this metric and try and understand what it means. In this case, we've actually measured the cyclomatic complexity on a number of functions. And in this particular case, this function has a value of four. That's very low. We can view a graphical representation of that function. And as we can see, we have one, two, three, four paths through that code. That's why we have a value of four. If you take a look at more complex code, in this particular case, this function has a value of 56. It's shown in red as fail because it's above the threshold that we've specified. Well, let's take a, a closer look at that. And here we're viewing a flow graph. And as we can see, this really is, is quite complex and it's going to be difficult to understand, maintain and test. So ideally, we probably want to be able to refactor this function. And we could do that by looking and saying, OK, here's an entry point. Here's an exit point. Let's take all this code here and put that into a separate function. And the same with this bit of code here. And then we're going to reduce the complexity of this particular function. All right. Well, let's take a, a closer look at this inside the tool TB Vision. Right. So this is TB Vision. I've got some source code here. I've already analyzed this code and we can take a look and view the metrics on this code. So let's go and view a quality review. And as we can see, we're measuring clarity of the code, maintainability and testability. Well, for the clarity, we're looking at things like how many comments do we have in the code? And we're looking at things like the comments in the headers. We're looking at the comments in the declarations. The comments in the executable code. Well, we don't always have comments in the executable code. In this case, the default threshold is one. I don't have any. And so that's why this is shown as failed. Let's take another look at how we can view these metrics. Let's look at a call graph. And this call graph, we can put it into various different modes. So we can put it into a mode that shows us effectively the clarity of the code by measuring things like the depth of loop nesting. We can measure the number of code comments per executable lines. How many comments do we have in the declaration part of a function? Well, it's expecting one. I don't have any at all. And we can also measure the number of blank lines, number of comments in the executable code. And probably more useful is how many comments do we have associated with each particular function? How many comments in the headers? We can also measure metrics, giving us an idea of maintainability. And that's where we're going to be able to measure things like the cyclomatic complexity. And we probably have the default thresh threshold set to 10. 
And that's why this is being shown as failed. We can also measure metrics, giving us an idea of testability. So measuring things like the fan out, fan in, procedure exit points, number of loops. Well, what generally we should do is we should customize the thresholds for all these metrics. So let's go and do that. So to do that, we can go and we can set in the advanced options, we can tell the tool which file to use. If we edit this particular file, we can see we're able to set the various thresholds for cyclomatic complexity. We can see here it's set to a maximum of, of 10. Well, that's very slow, low. Well, what I've done is I've already modified one of these files. I'm to go to go and find this. So let me just find where this is located. So this is going to be inside here. And then this was using the STM32 cube IDE. My project is this one here. And in my configuration, I've got a copy of that file we just looked at. And if we edit this, we're going to be able to see that I've made a number of changes. So we can see in this particular case that the maximum cyclomatic complexity, I've increased it to 15. We can see that for some of these things, like how many comments do we have in the executable code? Well, I've actually switched off that metric. So let's go and delete the results and we'll do analysis now against this new uh, set of, of um, thresholds. So just deleting the results. And now I need to go and reanalyze the code. So this is going to take a, a little bit of time as it starts to run the analysis. So it's also doing analysis against the NISRA coding standard at this particular point. So first of all, it's doing the static analysis. And then it's going to do the complexity analysis. And it's joined this phase. And it's going to calculate the metrics such as the cyclomatic complexity. I've also told it to do some additional analysis. There's the static data flow and also the cross reference. And now it's generating a number of reports. So we'll wait for that to finish. And then we'll go and take a look at a system call graph. And now on the call graph, we're going to be able to put this into a view showing the code quality. And in this particular case, we can see everything is green. We can see our cyclomatic complexity the threshold is now set to 15. And so this particular function is now showing as passed. If we wanted, we could actually view the flow graph for that function. And there we can see that's probably about as complex as you want a function to be. At the same time, we can look at the testability. And again, we can see the various thresholds. And also we could look at the clarity. And there we can see we've switched off a number of metrics so we basically just have the depth of loop nesting, the average length of basic blocks and the number of comments in the headers. And I've set this to a minimum of two comments for every function. So there very quickly is a quick overview of how we're able to measure metrics in order to ensure we have high quality software. If you'd like more information, then please don't hesitate to contact us at LDRay. Thank you.